Hello, welcome to Biostock Studio here in Lund. Today we're taking a closer look at Carbiotics, a biotech company based right here in Lund. Joining me today is CEO of the company, Christopher Cook. He'll be answering some questions about the company's vision and give us a brief overview of the company overall. Welcome, Christopher. Thank you so much. So could you begin just giving us an overview of the company and your pipeline, please? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Carbiotics is a company that's promoting the concept of, of smart prebiotics, actually smart prebiotic ingredients. And uh, what are smart prebiotic ingredients, I guess, is the natural question that comes. Uh, they're uh, products that have a high uh, effect or efficacy. So they, they stimulate the production of these SCFAs, which help repair the mucosal layer in the gut and lead to the, um, um, the upregulation of you know, positive human biomarkers, I guess you can mention, yeah, put it in that way. Um, uh, they also have high tolerance in the sense that they're, they're products that you consume large amounts of without having distress in the gut uh, in terms of gas production and discomfort. Um, secondly, they're products that uh, where we can validate the effect of an individual. Does it work for someone? Does it create a positive impact in terms of elevating SCFAs both in the short, short term but also uh, medium and long term? And can we optimize that through dose optimization? Uh, and personalize eventually as well products for individuals. And then lastly, uh, it's about can we find nice synergies between uh, different types of products from food, sort of nutraceutical, medical food, and eventually therapeutic products. Uh, so our belief is that, that these smart prebiotics uh, could represent about 5% of the market in uh, uh, the next 10 years, which means that as interest grows, with personalization and transparency, uh, so will the demand for these types of smart ingredients. And for us, it's about delivering uh, those products to different businesses. So the mission of the company is quite simple. It's, it's, it's to increase the consumption of these smart prebiotics. That's the core mission of the company. And how do we do that? We need to produce very good, low-cost prebiotics. Uh, we want to get them into as many different products and form factors as possible, from food all the way to therapeutics. And then we want to provide the market with a low cost companion diagnostic to validate that the products are working. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole focus of the company from the smart prebiotic to how we will get this concept to market. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that brings me to one of your um, platforms, LinkGut. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it and how does it fit into your business model? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, LinkGut is our, our B2B or B2B2C one can argue, uh, gut health test, which is essentially a, a white label API service. Uh, it is the gut health test. It's an extremely cost effective test, highly flexible and reliable that we offer to businesses, ultimately the customers of our different modulators. And why are we offering it? Well, to get a competitive advantage. You can imagine if we have a competitor just selling an ingredient where they've carried out maybe certain studies on efficacy, and where we have an ingredient at par, but we have also a companion diagnostic test where our customers can offer their customers a validation tool. Does it work for them or does it not work for them? Double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. um, but if you demonstrate efficacy for an individual in the short term, medium term, you create stickiness, mm -hmm. customer retention, and uh, a higher likelihood that the, the customer stays with a specific brand or product. Mm -hmm. um, you've recently begun the installation of the first Carbioaxis uh, production line. How significant is this for, for the company? Uh, as I've mentioned in, in previous uh, discussions and interviews, it's, it's obviously the core of the company. Mm -hmm. uh, it is our uh, sort of learning lab to optimize our process. It's where we're going to be uh, scaling up the production of nutraceuticals, eventually medical foods and, and therapeutic co-treatments and co-interventions locally, uh, potentially up to 1,000 tons uh, over the next 10 years. It becomes the template for expansion as well uh, as we look into uh, food and beverage because we cannot get to the price point unless we produce at a much larger scale. And therefore, the learnings uh, from Buv. Uh, where our pilot facility or, or first large-scale facility is located, uh, we'll take those learnings definitely into the, those larger production sites. 
and uh, and obviously the contacts we make uh, as we scale up as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is the core of the company, mm -hmm. definitely, and it, and it's the the backbone of every single obviously uh, modulator class we have. And there's no sense to have a competitive advantage with a companion diagnostic unless you have a core product to uh, uh, influence someone's gut health with. Yeah. Um, well, finally, looking ahead, uh, what can you expect from the company within the next six months? Or what are, you, what are your top milestones for, for the company? Yeah, obviously, um, uh, the, the completion of the site, uh, startup, optimization work, and, and feeding that in, obviously, into uh, the earlier learnings we got uh, on the production side through third parties. Uh, and so submitting our uh, regs, uh, getting them approved, and obviously the process of starting a pr uh, the production of, of samples uh, for customers, uh, for studies as well, which we're committed to. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, launching the product. This is key. As I said, it's it's fundamental to the, to the company going forward, and getting that product to market uh, is the the most important thing. Uh, in addition to that, and to sort of combat uh, potential or I would say very real uh, geopolitical uh, headwinds, mm -hmm. uh, as well as um, uh, macroeconomic developments, of course we want to quickly look into the diversification of our product portfolio as well as well as different substrate materials. So assessing local substrate materials is of, of course of interest as well because we're using maize as our primary um, uh, substrate material. Although we're less impacted by price modulation on the grain side given the fact that it is such a small part of our, our cost structure uh, on a cost of goods sold basis. And the fact we were targeting more high-end nutraceutical products as well. And the fact that, generally speaking, food and health are somewhat insulated uh, in any, any time or period of a, of a macroeconomic downturn. Mm -hmm. So I think that's quite favorable in the company's uh, perspective. Um, but still, we need to engage those activities in terms of looking at, across the entire portfolio, looking at different raw materials as well as, as a side activity. And again, um, that includes getting IP when it comes to you know, therapeutic development. And, uh, and carrying on with these studies as well, uh, getting that empirical data in place to validate uh, the launch of, for example, a medical food. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks so much for giving us this overview, Christopher, and uh, yeah, we wish you all the best. And uh, uh, yeah, we will look forward to seeing you back on the program soon. Great, it's always a pleasure to be here and talking to you. Thanks. thanks.